All right, this is the second video in a series dedicated to mastering Rook and Bishop versus Rook. In the first video, I went over positions where the defender's king is one square within the bishop's triangle. In this video, I'll go over positions where the defender's king is two squares within the bishop's triangle. I introduced the Zen defense in the last video, but I didn't go over it that much, so I'll go over it in this video. But first, let's look at positions where the attacker's rook occupies the file that the defender's rook normally needs when employing a Zen defense. All right, so this is a recurring tactical theme that you'll see in a lot of sub variations of more complex positions. There's this dynamic checkmating idea due to the attacker's rook controlling this key file. There's no escape. So if this bishop was not pinned to its king, black would be winning immediately with bishop f3. But with this rook pinning the bishop, black wins with threatening checkmate up here. White has no choice but to try to escape the bishop's triangle. And now black can play rook to b7, threatening this contact checkmate, and there's nothing that white can do, so white is lost here. If black instead tries going for this checkmate immediately, then there's a big difference here because the defender's king has room to bring in the rook to block up here. So this position is a draw. It's a fourth zen. There's no way for black to make progress here. If this position was shifted to the right, then black would be winning. Now white has to move onto the edge to avoid the skewer, so white has just enough room to get a draw here. And now white has a third rank defense on the C file, which is closely related to the Zen defense. So let's just move the king into the center. Now this bishop plans to obstruct the third rank so that the king can now invade. So the idea of the third rank defense is to keep the king in the center, but anticipate which side of the board the attacker's king is going to invade the third rank on after the bishop obstructs the third rank, and then move away from that side and plan to escape the bishop's triangle on the side opposite the attacker's king, which is going to be the same side as the defender's rook. So the defender's king is going to be one square within the bishop's triangle where it's ready to escape the first rank, and the only way that the attacker can really do anything forcing is to check coming from the second rank, which forces the defender's king two squares into the bishop's triangle, and then the attacker can play for a contact checkmate, which prevents the defender from stepping back one square within the bishop's triangle, but the defender can move the rook, employing a zen defense where the rook is prepared to block checkmate. If the attacker tries anything else, the defender can always move back one square into the bishop's triangle, where it's ready to escape the first rank. Here, there's other ways that the defender can draw, like the defender can move onto the bishop's triangle because the rook's close enough to avoid uh, getting lost by a discovered attack. The king can defend it. So let's look at this from a more natural looking angle. We get a symmetrically equivalent third rank defense. If we go back, instead of king to c1, if white plays rook to c3 check and black plays king to d4, then white has a third rank defense on the third rank.
And now white can draw with king to f1 because white's rook is close enough so that it won't be lost to a discovered attack. But king to d1 is more methodical, which leads to a zen defense. And this time it's a third zen instead of a fourth zen. And this is pretty much symmetrically equivalent to what happens in the lines where white's king gets trapped on the A file. So let's go back to rook to c3 check. The more natural move is bishop to d3. And now white's king gets forced to the A file like we saw before. But a difference in this variation is that not only can white draw with a third rank defense along the C file, but white also has an additional drawing choice of rook to b3, which is a second rank defense along the b file. So black's rook is never able to take control of the second rank, which is the b file here, because white's rook is going to be attacking it. So white's king is never going to be entombed on the edge. White should be prepared to switch from the second rank defense on the b file to the second rank defense on the second rank if that's needed. Alright, so this position is an easy win for black, but if rook to b7, then white gets a draw with rook to c8, which is a zen defense. This tactical theme is a good illustration of why it can often be better for the defender to have a passive rook rather than an active rook. So the defender usually only wants to have an active rook if he can set up a Cochrane defense or a Zen defense. But here, white can't set up a Zen defense by force, so white's rook is in a very bad location, even though it's considered active. Now let's look at another example where this time it's white to move and draw, and white has a choice of whether to check from an active location or a passive location. So this is white to move and draw. Black's threat is bishop to a4 check, followed by rook to e1 mate. If white plays rook to c7 check, then black's going to be winning here. We get the same kind of tactical theme we saw before, where white's rook is not in a very good location because it can't set up a Cochrane defense or a Zen defense by force. Black's winning easily here. The correct move for white is rook to h3 check even though this is considered a more passive location for the rook white reserves the option of playing for a first rank defense which is what white needs in order to get a draw so after bishop to d3 black still has the idea of check and mate with bishop to c2 check but the bishop is pinned so black can't do anything with the bishop right now but black can maneuver the rook to threaten checkmate, which forces white's king one square within the bishop's triangle, and now black threatens a contact checkmate, so white is unable to reach his end defense by force, but white still has a draw with the first rank defense, and now white's rook has just enough room to waste moves, so there's no way that black can make progress and put white into Zug's wing. White has a draw here. This is much like a position we saw in the last video, but in that position, white's rook didn't have an extra square to waste moves, so black was able to put white into Zug's wing here, but in this position, white can simply waste moves with the rook, and black's pieces have achieved the most that they can achieve so they can't really improve their positioning from here alright so in that example the defender was able to get a draw by choosing a more passive defensive location for the rook rather than the more intuitive active location the passive defensive location allows for a first rank defense which was essential for getting a draw here now the first rank defense, the third rank defense, and the Zen defense are all pretty closely related and they're often transposing to each other. The defender generally 
prefers a position closer to the center and the defense can fail if the defender's king is too close to the corner. Now I still haven't explained why the fifth zen is a win, but before I do that let's take an inventory of the basic defenses. So in the majority of possible formations of this endgame, the defender's king is going to be nearer to the center, so is going to have a chance to play for the Cochrane defense or the second rank defense, but if the defender can't reach one of those most active defenses, then the defender will have to settle for a Zen defense or a third rank defense or a first rank defense. And if the defender can't reach one of those defenses, there's some more professional defenses in which the defender actually prefers to be closer to the corner rather than a more central location on the edge. We won't be examining the more professional drawing methods until the next several parts, but for now we can see how the defender's king can be better close to the corner instead of near the center. All right, this is black to move and win. In this position, the formation is closer to the edge, so it's more complicated because the rook doesn't have an extra file to threaten checkmate on the first rank. So if there was an extra file, then the rook could move over there and then king to d1 and then rook to e5. But since there's no extra file here, White could simply play king to b1 and then block on the c file, and this position is a draw. So, because black can't use the same method as before, black has to use a more clever method of forcing the rook off of one of these strong posts. So this will show why the rook is generally not good when it's placed closer to the action. It's kind of similar reasons as in rook and knight versus rook. When the rook's further away, the enemy pieces don't influence it as much. So when the rook is on the 6th rank or the 5th rank, there's going to be ways to exploit the rook's lack of a blocking move on the d-file or the c-file. So. The correct move here is rook to d7, Zugzwang, controlling the b7 square. Now, the rook has no options to maintain the pin except rook to b6 and rook to b5, and there's going to be ways to exploit either. So, if rook to b6, then black exploits the rook's lack of a block on d6, so rook to f7 threatening checkmate, and there's no way for white to employ a zen defense, so with the rook on b8 then this would be a draw, but with the rook on b6, the b6 square is restricted by the bishop, so there's no way for white to defend checkmate here. So. Instead of rook b6, if rook b5, this time white has a clear path to the d file if black tries rook e7, but with the bishop controlling c5, black can play a variation where white's rook would have to block on the c file. So rook to a7, king to b1, and now the rook can't block on the c file. If the rook was had a safe path to the c file, then this position would be a draw. All right, this is black to move and win. It's a fifth zen. It's not a draw like the similar formations. In this formation, the defender's king's quickest escape route from the bishop's triangle is simply leading to this perpendicular edge. So there's just a symmetrically equivalent triangle prepared to entomb the king. And also because the rook has to maintain control 
of the line adjacent to the edge in order to prevent the checkmate. This rook is going to be subject to skewer when the attacker's rook relocates, but from the position where it is, the skewer's going to be refuted. The king simply supports its rook, and now black has a second rank defense here. It's a second rank defense along the B file, so it's not going to work if black goes for that skewer immediately. Also, if instead of trying for the skewer, uh, remember that when the rook is close to the action, it's easy for the attacker to gain tempo by attacking. So, and the rook doesn't have good access to important squares, like it can't check here. So, but remember the second rank stalemate theme we looked at last time. It's a key theme here where black can't really do anything to keep his king uh, on the strong c file so it's like what we've seen before but the c files the third ranks the c file and the second rank is the b file so it's just going to be stalemate tactics there and then black's king won't be able to reach the strong c file but if black's bishop was on c3, it could control b4, and then black would capture with the bishop instead, and then it wouldn't be stalemate. So black wants to aim for a position like this, but with the bishop on c3 instead. And the problem with playing bishop c3 immediately is that white simply repeats positions, so... There's the way that black gets the bishop on c3 is going to have to be coming from white checking. So then the rook's not going to have enough tempo to come and check on the d file. And this b5 square is optimal because it defends the skewer from the furthest possible location so that this tempo gaining move is not as strong as the tempo gaining move if say black wastes a move trying to get the rook off this optimal location if rook b4 this still avoids the skewer but the tempo gaining move is a lot stronger so black would have an easy win here after check and then check with the bishop so the b4 square is closer to the action so black's tempo gaining move is stronger the only way to keep the rook on this optimal b5 square is to check with tempo and then return the rook to b5. But now black's gotten what he's wanted. He has the bishop on c3 where it controls b4. So there's no stalemate theme in the future. So now black can go ahead and play for this tactic. And... Now this is no longer going to do anything because the rook doesn't have time to return to its normal post. This king has to move immediately, so this block would have white's rook in a bad location. So instead of going for the skewer here, which would be refuted by a second rank defense along the b-file, black attacks the rook with tempo reflecting the formation of the king so now the triangle is along the a file and black is threatening rook a1 mate and this rook is under attack and this stalemate attempt is refuted by a bishop capture instead of a king capture so white's only move here is pretty much to obstruct the rook's path to a1. The b1 square is now taken away from white's king, so white's going to have a harder time escaping the a file. So now it's like white's rook is doing what black's rook 
needs to do. So it's like Black has two rooks when he moves the rook over, but first Black needs to gain a tempo to move White's king further into the bishop's triangle. So now it's going to take White's king extra time to get out, and this rook obstructs the square, so it's like it's doing what Black's rook would want to do. So now when the black rook swings over threatening checkmate white doesn't have time to move and then escape it's as if black had another piece controlling here so this is just pretty much an easy win and there's no check here there's no second rank defense checks so this is it All right, so a quick review of the fifth Zen position. The defender's king is closer to the corner than normally, so it's going to end up on the edge. So black has an easy win here. The It's not going to work if black attempts the tactics immediately because of the stalemate. So first, black has to waste a move. And the only way for the rook to return to the optimal location would be to check with tempo and then return but with the bishop on c3 now the bishop is stopping the stalemate tactic in the future so before gaining the tempo black needs to reflect the formation of the king now this tempo move is a lot stronger sealing off the b3 square and it doesn't matter that it no longer controls c2 and the rook also threatens mate with this tempo move. So with the bishop controlling b4, there's nothing that white can do but obstruct the rook's path. And then after gaining a tempo, forcing the king to have to use another move to escape. White doesn't have time to move and move the rook and escape. But he would have time if the king was here instead.